John Safran is a journalist, broadcaster and author of books including Murder in Mississippi and Depends What You Mean by Extremist. His latest book, Puff Piece, puts a flame under the tobacco industry's past practices as well as exploring the impact vaping has on our health, kids and culture. Please welcome me in joining John Safran to the show. John, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to Offbeat. No, no, always good to be on RMI TV. <laughs> That's so good. So firstly, congratulations on your book, Puff Piece, which was published this year, which brings up a very interesting topic in modern day society. We all know smoking has declined in Australia over the last few decades. What drew you to look at what tobacco companies were up to? I was just uh, confused and I wanted to... And my intuition was saying I should de-confuse myself. I, uh, I saw a full page ad in the newspaper by Philip Morris to Melbourne people saying they're going to shut down as a cigarette company and relaunch as a health enterprise. I was like, is that true? So I thought maybe it is true. It was just going to be one of these momentous moments in history, like the fall of the Berlin wall or something like that. And then I found out it's not true. Oh, sorry, it's more complicated than that. And then I was confused why no one was interested in this story, in that Philip Morris were pulling off this, uh, I keep on trying to think of a better word than um, ruse, maybe ruse. They were trying to pull off this ruse, and they had pulled off this ruse, and no one had noticed that the ruse being that cigarettes, uh, menthol cigarettes getting banned in Europe with a mind to banning all cigarettes all across Europe, and then them coming back with a, going, okay, well, yeah, we won't produce cigarettes anymore. We'll produce this thing. It's a, it's a heat stick. And it looks exactly like a cigarette because it kind of is. And uh, so it's not a vape. Like it's so much about this is having to uh, machete through the weeds of uh, confusion. Like, like, like for instance, as soon as you start talking about this, people's minds might immediately go, to, oh, he's, he's talking about vaping, but it's not vaping. It's this third thing. And, and, and Philip Morris totally leverage that we're all confused about this, including me. So what most surprised you when writing Puff Piece? Uh, they claim that this new product they have that looks exactly like a cigarette. Uh, they say, oh, because the tobacco within it is only heated to an incredible degree as opposed to catching a light. It, the discharge that looks incredibly like smoke and contains nicotine and tobacco that you inhale into your lungs. They go, oh, it's not technically smoke because it's only been heated to an incredible degree uh, and somebody has to catch a light for it to be smoke, which that's so much fudging in there. But anyway, let's park, park, that, park that to one side. Anyway, but then I was digging through some old, uh, uh, an old a science journal. When I say old, not that old, you know, maybe, I can't remember, maybe four years old or something. Five, and they like to uh, submit some of their studies to these uh, highbrow, well-regarded medical journals because then like, there's this association. It's like, oh, as we, as we had published in the Oxford uh, Medical Journal, then, and everyone's like, oh, Oxford, they're kind of, that sounds like something famous. <laughs> anyway, so so what I'm saying is they try to hide, they, they don't want to reveal anything, but then they there's this one exception. They don't want to reveal anything about their science and the intricacies, but there's this one exception where they want to get published in uh, medical journals. Anyway, I was looking through an old one of those and they were discussing this product that we've been talking about as discharging smoke. And I was like, oh, got them. Like the, and and the, the best guesswork I could do about it is because because they're so careful not never to refer to this discharge as smoke because their whole angle is it's not smoke and because it's not smoke it's not smoking and then they can just and because it's not smoking it's uh, healthier or they they imply or whatever but I, but I'd caught them out or their scientist house calls calling the discharge smoke or and then. I realized, or at least this was my guess, was uh, the scientists had started doing that particular study before the marketing department had decided that their whole thing was going to be how this doesn't discharge smoke. So I'd sort of like found this little shred of evidence. I'm like Indiana Jones mm -hmm. of the discharge being smoke. So yeah, there were lots of little adventures like that where I, I got to 
in my own little way kind of uh, trip them up a little bit. Because you purchased some shares in Philip Morris, as you yes. sort of touched on, in order to ask some difficult questions at their AGM. Can you take us through how that went? Well, one thing I learned was everything they do is about misdirection. They're all trying to make you think about something else or start going down some rabbit hole or chase some red herring where and get your eyes off what the main game is. So, so even the whole idea where they're saying, uh, this is this discharge that comes out of this new product isn't actually smoke. Even that, even that's that, that's like this misdirection about, oh, is it smoke? Isn't it smoke? Is it smoke? Is it isn't it smoke? Because because I realized that what kills you in a traditional cigarette because because their, their their argument I know this is all confusing and but it's not my fault. It's like they've they, they've tricked me and. This is, even though I'm kind of babbling on and going in all these sorts of directions, like I can't make it even any simpler than that because Philip Morris have made it so, so complicated. Anyway, so their thing is, this is what Philip Morris says. They say smoke is what kills you, is the main thing that kills you in a traditional cigarette. This new product doesn't emit smoke and therefore it doesn't contain the thing that kills you in a traditional cigarette. And let's just pretend it's true that this new product doesn't emit smoke. We'll go along with it, even though it's a fight. But let's just go along with it. I realized later on that them saying that what kills you in a cigarette is smoke is both accurate, but like this incredibly ingenious misdirection too, because more precisely what kills you in a cigarette is the tar in the smoke. So therefore the question really isn't, does this new product, emit smoke it's more does this new product emit tar and the answer is yes it does and so you're still in let's say it's not smoke you're still inhaling um the tar which is the thing that kills you in a traditional cigarette and uh so but then i realized even that's a bit of a misdirection because what what the real question is almost like the only question is is why do people hate cigarettes because they give you cancer so does, will this new product give you cancer? <laughs> I just realized no one's ever asked Philip Morris that before. Like, because they, they're so good at like sending people, like asking all these other questions. Is it smoke? Is it not smoke? Is it, you know, is it, is it a cigarette? Is this more a vapor or not a vapor or whatever? So then when I got onto their meeting, I did ask the, uh, the scientist. I said, listen, the things people hate in a cigarette is that gives you cancer. Will this new product not give me cancer, like the same kind of cancer that a cigarette will give me. And they had to concede. And it was like, no one had ever asked them that before. So I got them on record oh. for the first time saying that we can't say, we can't say this product won't give you cancer. Yeah. And, 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 but you managed to front load it with all the misdirections that, because they talk about how it contains less of the, carcinogens and this and that it's got less this less that it's they, they come up with all this stuff it's uh 95 blah blah more blah blah they've just got all this stuff but it's like who cares if it's still going to give you cancer who cares going a little bit away from the puff piece book through yeah. i'm going to talk about some of your other stuff so through race relations and yeah. john saffron versus god you caught it some pretty controversial topics how do you know where the line is and when it's worth stepping over it. Oh, well, clearly, as you know, by my work, I don't know where the line is. So <laughs> that's an issue. I'm generally, um, I, I like, uh, I, I'm, I'm more kind of definite about it now. Like you kind of go along with instinct for quite a bit early on in your career when you're young, at least I did or whatever. And then you get older. And people start asking you questions. They start thinking a bit harder about your work and you start figuring out, well, what, what am I doing? What am I? Or whatever. And then I realized, I realized I'm a storyteller, which I know that sounds really simple, but let me like um, explain, which, which is more like, well, what aren't I <laughs> if I'm a storyteller? So um, these, are, these are a bit, bit like long winded, but we will get there. <laughs> so I, I think when, people read or see something that's nonfiction, they think it's like either it's journalism or it's an, uh, an op-ed, an opinion piece, or they think it's activism. 
And I would say that my work uh, is, it draws on those tools. So I use all those things in some ways, like I, like I do you, you know, use the tools of journalism and I use the tools, I guess, of having an op-ed. I often have opinions or whatever. And in some ways, I guess it's sort of activism, sort of, although I reckon that's a bit woolier and looser or whatever. But I think ultimately I, I just use all those tools for storytelling, to tell a story. And I think I really am more a storyteller who uses those tools. So to give you an example, because it all sounds a bit airy-fairy, is in, in Puff Piece, like I, 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 I went to... I, spoke to other cigarette companies i didn't just speak to philip morris but then when i was writing the book it's like as a storyteller it's just works so much better you know in that traditional like the little guy goes out to slay the dragon it just made the story just made so much more sense and also me as a character in the story which now we're getting really confusing because i'm like i'm saying there's a distinction between john safran <laughs> and john safran the character in the book but it's just like funnier in the book that my character in the book is like mono obsessed with philip morris and that and because that says something about my character and also it makes me i don't know it just works better it's really hard to explain but it's like it just works better that i'm like a character that's like that's mono obsessed with slaying this one dragon or whatever rather than like if i was a, if i was just doing journalism i'd be like um oh well um, i'm going to compare this cigarette company to that cigarette company and i'm going to like and now I'm going to go to the Liberal Party and I'm going to do the Labor Party or whatever. And it's like, I just don't want to do that if it's going to make the story, like, work. John Safran, it's been so good to have you on the show this morning talking about your new book, Puff Piece. Thank you. It is published by Hamish Hamilton and is available in the dwindling number of bookstores that still exist and online. <laughs> so thank you so much for talking to and, us. And you can listen to it on uh, as an uh, audio book. And I squeak. And audio book. So if you've been like, oh, that sensuous, deep, bassy voice I've been hearing in this interview, can I really hear more of that? You can. Audiobook. Go to the cool. audiobook <laughs> first. I reckon that would be the good one. All right. so thank, thank you, you very much, much for having me on.